I was in the Navy. Okay. And were you drafted or did you enlist? I was drafted. Okay. And what, in what year? 1943, November. November 1943. Got out in 1946, April. And in what branch of the Navy were you in? I was in the deck force. Uh, an LCVP boat, you know, where you ride around, take troops into the beach. He was on an LST. Okay. He was on an LST, but he threw the little boats around to shore. Oh, wow. <laughs> I run taxi service. Hey, would you be better off over here? No, 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 no. It'll be all right. It's going to be all right. And uh, did you ever see combat? Pardon? Did you ever see combat? Oh, yeah. We had to plow the Lulu Islands first, and then we went to Lady in the Philippines, and then we went to Luzon in the Philippines, and then we went to Okinawa. And you remember when they invaded Okinawa, what year and what day it was? Oh. April Fool's Day, 1935. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was Okinawa, that was the last battle. And what was, what was what was that experience like? Huh? What was Okinawa like? Oh, I never went ashore in Okinawa. After we left the Philippines, before we just moved troops, you know, we back and forth to New Guinea to the Philippines and pick up stuff and take it up there, you know, to the Philippines. Well, then after the Philippines was over, they took our LST. I think it was like six of us, maybe, I don't remember. And they loaded us up with 14-inch battle wagon shells. We never did that before. And five-inch shells. And we loaded them on an LST one at a time, down through the hole, and the guys were rolling by hand. The LST, LST decks. We went with the fleet to bombard Okinawa. And they blew that place apart. The LST don't have no big refrigerator or nothing. But when you get up there in them battle wagons, them guys have everything. They give us ice cream in big gallon cans. Ice cream, we didn't have that. And they bombarded Okinawa. And I think for like two or three weeks before they invaded, and they invaded Okinawa on April Fool Day, 1945. And what was your most memorable experience? Huh? Was that your most memorable experience? Yeah, I remember that pretty well. <laughs> and how did you stay in touch with your family during all this? Uh, it loosed on. Tricky? Our, 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 our LST had loosed on. That's where MacArthur come ashore, but I didn't see. Okay. And he come ashore there. We went around Manila. And our LST-663 was the flagship. And there was a boy on there got killed on another ship. And I got him over in that little PT boat we had and pick him up and take him over to land. That was my only dead soldier that I ever seen out there. They let him down in a stretcher and slack from shells, you know, shooting in the air hit him, they said in the back of the head, come out of his mouth. And we took him over to land so they could bury him. He'd never been in combat. Didn't have his hard hat on, there on LST. Just unlucky that was on. Um, we, never, we never lost a guy aboard our ship. Nobody ever got hurt. Oh, um, what do you think of Honor Flight? Huh? What do you think of Honor Flight? That was the greatest thing. They had the nicest people. That K Downing was on Oswald on K Downing. Had. They give you, feed you going over. They feed you when you get over there. They feed you going on the plane. And water, story. water, water. <laughs> Too bad you know, it was Yeah. It, it was unbelievable. There's so many nice people in there. I mean, all they would just give you water. And Kay, 
Kay Downing had her camera and my camera and the Klein boy's camera and she took pictures and pictures and pictures and she sent me an album, probably about five inches square or something like that. It was what, 92, pic no, 92 pictures she sent me and sent me a DVD. Maybe they give me that down right here, I don't know. Anyway, somebody give me one. <laughs> a lot of nice people on that plane. There was uh, 135, I think, but there was 33 World War II veterans. And uh, 10 of them was in wheelchairs. And when we got on the plane, got over there, got off in Baltimore, there was the Marines and everybody to welcome us over there, which we, I didn't know. I suppose somebody else knew, but I didn't know. Then we get on the bus and they take you downtown and they give you cookies and cookies and water and water. And the girl up front, she said, now if we're lucky today, you may get to see Bob Dole, because he always wants to meet the troops. He'd been sick. We got over there that day and I met Bob Dole and his wife Elizabeth, and I got my picture taken with her, and she didn't like it very well, she kind of yelled. <laughs> but I said, I said, Bob, I got your book and I read your book. No, he says, that was my mom's book. I got Bob Dole's book and read it. You, if you're a reader, you want some history about Bob Dole, mm -hmm. it's called, if you, if you, I call it his book. I said, Bob, I got your book. No, he says that was my mom's book. And what it said, it's one soldier story. One soldier story. You never know what that guy went through for two years. Remember, he got wounded in his arm and everything, and it told the whole story. It's unbelievable what he went through with and how he learned to walk again, and then a cat, and toes clear up to here, and his mother took care of him a lot. She took care of him. It's unbelievable. He, he was there. You ever go to the library and want a good book about a soldier? One soldier story. Bob Dole. Yeah. yeah. He said, no, that was my mom's book. Every day, she, you know, he did the talking, and she did all the writing out. But there's wonderful. That honor flight's wonderful. That girl, she called out. Well, we'd been over there three or four times. And when we go, I always go with the family. You know, my wife and all go together, granddaughter and her husband and boys. Well, my daughter's Kate is running around right here giving the cookies out. <laughs> yeah. She said, Dad, you ought to come on that flight. If I get everything fixed out for you, will you go? Oh, well, okay, I'll go. And it was when the high state fair was going on. Two years ago or three, they let me out down at the airport and they went to the fair and I went over there. And one hour from here over, one hour back. And when we come back, I told Kay down there was, you know, watching the first guys, you know. She lives down south of Columbus. She's probably out here today. And I said, uh, I want you to meet my granddaughter and her husband and little boys. They may be there at the airport. I don't know they will be, but she'd already met the wife. And when we come in down to Columbus, they give you all this literature and all this stuff, you know. And the guys in the wheelchair, they go up, go up there, you know, and there's about 200 people who welcome us back. They carry on, <laughs> you know, unbelievable. It was nice. They got a lot of good people on them there, you know, to look after you. Like me, you don't have to know anything. They'll feed you and take you to the bathroom here and back here. Unbelievable. Yeah, you can talk for all day and all night and over there. But that girl, uh, the girl that kind of hit her in club, she called me on the phone. And she said, now, Mr. Morris, uh, well, you need a wheelchair. And I said, no, I don't think so. She said, well, if he's on one end of a football field, could you walk to that end? And I said, yeah, I could do that. 
well, could you walk back? And I said, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> I'll walk along. But it, it was real interesting. A lot of the guys needed to go, but didn't get a sense, you know. 